Hi, today we're going to talk about making hourglass units. Now this is one of the basic units that you'll use if you're making stars in your quilted projects. What you'll see in front of you here are two different types of hourglass units. This one only has two different fabrics in it. Uh, the sample here actually has three different colors in it. This type of unit was the type of hourglass unit that I used in the border of the quilt that you see behind me. And what I'd like to do is talk to you about different methods that you will see in books and magazines and the method that I prefer when I make my hourglass units. Usually when you open a book or pattern or magazine that has an hourglass unit in it, they will have you start with squares, actually cut the squares into triangles, and then sew the triangles back together in the form that you wanted to um, assemble them. Now, sewing these units together is not always an easy thing to do, as many of you will <laughs> recognize from having tried to do it, having tried to do this in the past. If you do this technique, what you're trying to do is you're actually sewing triangle pairs together and then eventually sewing the pairs together into the block. Now this is one method of making hourglass units, but it's actually not my preferred method. What I like to do um, when I make my hourglass units is to actually sew before I cut my units. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about here. So what I've got here, I've got the squares again, and they're bigger than what is listed in a pattern or magazine. Bigger by a quarter of an inch. By upsizing my squares approximately a quarter of an inch, it's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room to maybe not be quite so perfect with my stitching and my pressing, and, but still end up with a perfect unit once I trim that unit down with my favorite tool, which is called the tucker trimmer. You take the squares, the oversized squares, position them right sides together, align the edges fairly carefully, use a tool similar to this, it's called my Quilter's Magic Wand, and actually mark a couple of stitching lines that are a quarter of an inch on either side of the center diagonal. Once the lines are marked, head to, off to your sewing machine and do a stitching right on both those lines. Of course, the closer you mark, the closer you stitch, the better your end results are going to be. But once they're stitched, head over to your cutting mat and cut those units apart to create the infamous half square triangles. Now you can trim down these units using the tucker trimmer as well, but we're going to take them one step further and actually take the half square triangle units and construct them into pieced hourglass units. What I'm going to talk about is making this three color unit because that's the one that confuses most people. So I'm going to move these out of the way, but what I'm going to do is keep one of those and one of these units so that when I put these together, I'm going to align the squares and I'm going to take a minute to carefully align the seam that's in the center. So it'll be like this. With the center seam being carefully aligned, you can do that with a peak. You can do that by simply feeling and touching that piece in the middle. But once you have the two squares, and the other thing that I want you to notice is that the light colors are not going to be on top of your, on top of each other because you can end up doing this and oops, that's not what we want. We actually want, and that's one of the benefits of taking a peek, is that you're going to be able to see that you're going to end up with the hourglass that you want in the end. So I'll position the squares right sides together and then I'm going to take a ruler like this, mark the stitching lines from the opposite, on the opposite diagonal. Once the stitching line is marked, I'm going to take the unit, stitch on the stitching lines, and actually cut then in between the unit that I've created. You can actually do that by simply lining up the edge of your ruler with the corners of your square and slicing in between the two lines of stitching. When you do that and you press these open, what you are going to have are two of those nice hourglass units with this if you've taken time those centers should match beautifully and again I want you to realize these are oversized but I'm going to take the at this point I'm going to show you a little uh, pressing thing because normally the next question that's asked in my class is which way do I press 
this seam? Do I press it this way or do I press it this way? I actually prefer to do neither. My preferred method is to take my piece and s use a seam ripper to s gently remove the couple of stitches that are here. Gently remove, flip the piece over, the couple of stitches that are the perpendicular to that last line of sewing. So that once I remove those stitches and I turn my unit over, I'm going to be able to rotate this to make a perfect little four patch in the back and have a very flat seam that gives me a very flat intersection and no bulk in my units. So once I get my perfectly pieced and perfectly sized and pressed hourglass units, this is where I like to use my tucker trimmer tool. Now the tucker trimmer tool was actually designed for just this type of unit. When you look at the tool, what you'll notice is that, that it's loaded with a lot of different diagonal guidelines. I built those in there for a very specific reason. I've got diagonal seams and what I want to be able to do is quickly line up diagonal guidelines with my diagonal seams. So I'm going to use, this is going to be a four and a half inch unit. So what I'm going to look at on the ruler is one diagonal to line up with one diagonal seam and then find the correct size diagonal to line up with the other one. In this case, four and a half inches. So my four and a half inch diagonal, which is the diagonal that runs along here, is simply going to lay on the other seam. So when I go to trim this up, I'm not struggling to find the middle of four and a half. I'm not struggling to find horizontal and vertical measurements. What I'm looking at are my two diagonal guidelines here and here, lined up with the seams that I've sewn. I'll then take my cutter, clean up one of the corners. That makes that corner perfectly square, puts the seam right in the corner, rotate the block around 180 degrees, take the tucker trimmer, position it on the tool or on the unit the same way. This time, I'm not only, I not only have the diagonals, I have this diagonal to line up and this diagonal to line up, but I have a clean up line here and a clean up line here to line up with the edges that I've already trimmed down so that when I finish my trim, number one, I know I have a square. Number two, I know I have a square that's exactly the size that I want it to be to fit into my projects. Number three, I know I have a square that's exactly square and every seam goes directly into every corner. So if you've had trouble with this unit in the past and you're thinking you might like to try making some stars with your quilts, think about giving this method a try. Piecing or doing the stitching first before you make your units, making your units oversized, using the tucker trimmer tool to be able to quickly and easily trim everything down so that your units, when you go to put them into your projects, are going to be exactly the right size. I'm hoping that you'll give my tool a try. It's called the Tucker Trimmer. It has 11 different trim down size options available with this one tool. It's going to help you make those hourglass units the perfect way that you want them so that every time you put your blocks together, they're going to be dead on even. Look for this tool at your local quilt shop or you can order it directly from our website. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed the lesson today.